live from Santa Clara in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's The Cube, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation and Pivotal. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to SiliconANGLE Media's production of The Cube, worldwide leader in live tech coverage here at the Cloud Foundry Summit. Uh, we're in Santa Clara, California. Happy to have my co-host uh, for a day of coverage, uh, John Troyer. Uh, John, great to see you. Glad to be here, Stu. So, you know, we're reflecting back, you know, uh, the Cloud Foundry Summit uh, has been going on for a few years. Last time I went to it in person was, I believe, three years ago in San Francisco. It was actually the same year as the first DockerCon. Um, but reflecting back even further, you know, Cloud Foundry was founded in 2009 at a little company called VMware, which you and I uh, have some familiarity with. Um, back in 2009, I happened to be working for EM which was the major majority owner of, uh, of VMware, and where were, John, where were you in 2009? I was at VMware, uh, yeah. <laughs> doing, doing that thing, preaching about virtualization, and uh, Paul Moritz was there. There, there was a growing tr uh, a trend there in, in the company to be pulling out developer tools, and I think this was one of the really bright ideas that came out of that time at VMware. Yeah, Derek Collison, who, who's a Cube alum, we've had on many times there, uh, was really the, the creator there. Um, back when we were talking about, you know, when we talked about cloud, it was like, oh, yeah, it's about infrastructure today, but in the future, it's going to be as platform as a service. Um, fast forward, I mean, boy, the, the, the ebbs and the flows of Cloud Foundry got spun out into what became Pivotal. Um, you know, Cloud Foundry itself, you know, got, uh, it created a whole foundation. Um, PaaS uh, is kind of in the past now. We've said PaaS is PaaS A. Abby Kearns, who we're going to have on the program, who is the, uh, you know, with, with the Cloud Foundry Foundation, uh, said that, you know, it's not about PaaS anymore. It seems to be, uh, you know, I, I hear multi-cloud, I hear, uh, you know, really about, you know, enabling developers and agility. Uh, what, what, what's your take on some of this journey uh, that we've seen, John? Well, I, I think at this point in the journey, people are agreeing on the, the messaging and the needs and the things they want to be talking about. In fact, a lot of the messaging of Cloud Foundry, take my code, run it anywhere, I don't care how, the Cloud Foundry haiku is very similar to what you might hear from serverless, yeah. right? It's the same idea, different level of abstraction, different kinds of apps, but the idea that developer productivity is enhanced by not worrying about the things underneath them is a, is a clear uh, recognition across the industry today. Yeah, absolutely, and it really goes back, a term that used to be thrown around a bunch of years ago was application modernization. Uh, and you know, what does that mean? Uh, n number one is, uh, companies uh, you know, are, are becoming software companies. So when you hear companies like GE, we're going to have Liberty Mutual on today, and uh, you know, Liberty Mutual says, we want to be a software company that happens to deliver insurance. Um, and so you know, we, we, we've seen you know, car companies are going to become software companies that happen to have you know, vehicles in, in, in some kind of manner. So it's this transformation, you know, the software is eating the world meme, uh, and right, that differentiation, I want my company to be able to focus on my applications, and where that lives and what's underneath it doesn't matter enough, so right, whether it's serverless, serverless Kubernetes, uh, Cloud Foundry, OpenShift are all kind of options to allow me to allow my, you know, my, my people that write code uh, to work on that stuff and you know, make sure we get the operators and the infrastructure people involved. Right, and I want to consider Cloud Foundry and Cloud Foundry Summit uh, uh, in and of itself. I think it is uh, interesting and people will compare it to things like DockerCon and we were both at DockerCon. I'm struck again by some of similar messaging about developer experience and agile. I think here though, uh, the message much more enter the enterprise ready, the scalability, the management, the, the kind of business digital transformation was much more the conversation that's going on this week. Um, you know, the, the Docker experience, the container experience is a lot more bottom up, developer up, one developer kind of uh, engaging in a, in a, in a deployment, in a development pipeline. This is more about uh, what does your business need to do to, yeah. to move faster? A absolutely, and this is a foundation show, so what is the state of the ecosystem? Pivotal is the big player here. Pivotal is also our sponsor that allowed us to bring the program there. Really appreciate Pivotal's support uh, to bring us here, but you know, three years ago uh, when I went to the show, it was you know, IBM and HP, which is now HPE, uh, you know, very heavily involved. Cisco had a, a decent presence. Uh, now, you know, who's some of the headline uh, companies here? Well, big announcement with Microsoft. 
uh, Google Cloud is on stage. How does that you know, changing of who's involved, who's contributing, how many users are actually part of the foundation and doing things um, are changing. And as you brought up, very enterprise focus. Um, one of the dynamics I've seen is Pivotal's done a real good job of getting to you know, the C-level decision makers and help them say, you want to do that whole digital transformation um, and become a software company, we can help. We have the, 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 the labs group that will help you along that journey, um, and then they pull the developers in and say, hey, okay, here's, here's the tooling you've got, let's go write this stuff, and they, they get on board and then they drive that change. Right. You can't look at this stuff in isolation just for the foundation or the project uh, or just Pivotal, right? The other companies have their own journeys, uh, some of the big ones like HPE and Cisco have recently shifted a lot of their focus and their, and their emphasis on, on uh, open source and pulled back from other things like OpenStack. And so, you know, I don't think you can uh, put that solely on uh, the success or failure of, of Cloud Foundry. I think you're also seeing another dynamic which is the cloud platforms, Google and, and Microsoft, Azure, they want to be the best cloud platform for everything. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to silo anything, they, they are welcoming. And so that's an example of them coming in and welcoming Cloud Foundry uh, as one of the, uh, the services that run great on their platform. Yeah, uh, yesterday uh, SAP in their keynote put up this slide with all of these boxes and kind of made a joke, okay, I'm going to walk you through how we built our stack and it actually, the entire audience like cracked up. Chip Childers this morning said, I've, I've, I've redone my keynote, I'm just going to walk you through the stack and everybody laughed. But it comes to a point that what we discussed at OpenStack, John, this is not a simple you know, shrink wrap software. There are pieces of the component, how it all goes together. Uh, Kubo is something we're going to dig into, uh, which is we take Bosch, is the multi-cloud solution for Cloud Foundry, and then it says, okay, I've got my Cloud Foundry and I've got my Kubernetes, um, and I can have them kind of live side by side. Um, different from, uh, okay, we're going to take OpenStack and put Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes on top of it. Uh, can I put Kubernetes on top of it? I was talking to some people for, from Google leading up to the show, and they said, well, yes, you can put it on top, you can put it on the side, how deeply do you integrate it? It is still very early days for Kubernetes, even though you know, we've seen this real groundswell, especially in the developer's world. You mentioned we were at DockerCon, we're also going to have the Cube at KubeCon uh, later this year, so you know, lots of shows. Um, the maturity level, the adoption, who makes money, so many different angles to get in. I'm excited we're going to have some users on. What are you looking to take out of today's uh, event, John, uh, for some of our speakers or beyond? Well, uh, you know, we're here talking to people. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at energy and I'm looking at, uh, looking at people who, uh, their vision of the future, what they actually are, have accomplished, uh, the businesses and the business outcomes that they've, they've uh, achieved. I'm really looking forward to the customers and also the ecosystem, right? Cloud Foundry Foundation is part of the Linux Foundation. How are the different open source uh, components working together? Because in, we are discovering in 2017 and beyond that, that uh, all these open source stacks do need to interoperate and do need to talk with, with each other. And so I'll, that's something I'm very interested in as well. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our first guest, Chip Childers, is going to be able to go into a lot of them. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got a couple of guests from Pivotal, we've got a couple of end users, um, we've got people from the foundation, uh, we've got a guest analyst, uh, Stephen O'Grady's, uh, going to come on from Red Monk. Uh, so, got a, got a full day of coverage. Uh, in addition to some of the things you mentioned, uh, right, that, that kind of multi-cloud, how do we differentiate? You know, why, you know, Microsoft wants to be very open. Um, you know, you know, Amazon seemed to actually get like denigrated a little bit uh, by some of the comments of some of the speakers, not by the foundation or anything like that, but you know, Liberty Mutual, one of the guests we have on, they run on Amazon. Pivotal started Cloud Foundry on Amazon, and Amazon, of course, is the you know, juggernaut in the cloud world. We've actually got, you know, a, w one of our teams are out at the Amazon Public Sector Show uh, digging into that ecosystem. So, you know, Amazon is always, uh, you know, the elephant in the room, if you will, when we're talking about cloud. So how do all these pieces fit together? Uh, so I'm excited to dig in. Uh, really glad we can bring uh, you know the, the cube to, uh, to this event. Uh, you know, very much a you know t-shirt crowd. Uh, that th we've got the show floor behind us. Everybody you know getting excited about uh, you know some of those. I things. think we're the only ones with, with jackets here. Maybe there, one or there, two. There are there there's some press <laughs> and the analysts are, are, are here. But but absolutely, if we did this two days, we'd pick our favorite t-shirt and throw it on under the blazer. Uh, that that's kind of the valley way, as you know. All right. So John, really appreciate you joining me. Uh, please stay with us for the full day of coverage. As always, check out siliconangle.tv uh, for this and all the events we're going to be back, and we will be right back with our first guest here at the Cloud Foundry Summit. Thanks for watching theCUBE.